Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Obi Revenge. Oh great, Quince is reviewing another Ubuntu-based distro with KDE Desktop. Hey, settle down Tux, you have been a complete pain ever since I enabled that sudo insult me option. Actually, OB Revenge is based on Arch Linux and uses Openbox. Openbox is more of a window manager rather than a desktop, however with the right skills it is possible to customise it and create a beautiful looking desktop. And that is exactly what Jody, the creator of OB Revenge, has achieved. The default view has a panel at the top of the screen which houses Whisker menu from XFCE. Good choice there, the Whisker menu is very fast and responsive and it has a text searcher for finding applications. Moving along the panel we have an iconified view of currently open applications, a desktop switcher, time and calendar, network menu, shortcut to update manager, volume control, synapse launcher and finally power control. It's strange that there is power control on the desktop system, however it is very easy to disable. On the desktop we have a Conkey system monitor, time and date, even the wallpaper looks very smart and sophisticated. Now, OB Revenge uses the Calamari's system installer to get the OS installed on your system. It is a very simple point and click installer and it's as easy to use as the Ubuntu installer. Upon the first boot we are greeted by a welcome screen. I really do think welcome screens are underrated, but as a new user to an OS they are such a useful feature. OB Revenge welcome screen is a little simpler compared to some of the distros I've reviewed in the past, but it comes with a few basics like installing NVIDIA drivers, removing pre-installed VirtualBox modules, updating the system, installing some common applications, joining the Google Plus community and reading the user guide either in online or offline format. So let me sum up the distro so far. It's Arch Linux and it's as easy to use as Ubuntu. Now you might be wondering, why not use Manjaro? Well the difference with OB Revenge is that it uses the Arch AUR repositories, so you're getting a true Arch system, which is on the bleeding edge. Of course being on the bleeding edge does have risks, but I don't think Arch would have got to where it is today if it broke all the time for the majority of users. No, from what I understand, as long as you keep up with the system updates, your system should last many years, and perhaps the software will outlive the hardware. I could really see this suiting someone who has used Ubuntu, Debian or Fedora, and is looking at moving onwards to something more complex like Arch Linux. I have to say, using Arch, it is blisteringly fast, even in VirtualBox. We'll get a look at the speed more as the review progresses. I'm going to take a look at this software installation tool. So it's just a few basic applications that you might like to have on your system, and they're split out between internet, media and office. You'll notice there's a mixture of like GTK and Qt applications in the list. Under office we have the option of installing LibreOffice, Caligra or the lightweight AbbeyWord and Junior Merrick, as well as a couple of other applications. This is very simple to use, you can just literally point and click on the list and think yeah I'd like to install uh, Firefox and Chromium, actually I think I've done those already so that's one downside, it doesn't actually tell you if you have installed the application. I'm sure the developer may add that feature eventually, it's not really a major feature though so uh, let's, let's just think of something else, what haven't I got on the system? Um, I'm going to take a guess I have not installed Shotwell, let's try for that. But yes, the following software will be installed. Would I like to proceed? Yes, I would. You can see the applications at the back go partially transparent. That's a nice feature. And in this case, we get to see the Conkey script running. So yeah, you can see resources are minimal during that little installation. Looking at the user guide, now it's very good that they've provided an offline version. So you might be stuck on a system without internet access and you can get it installed. So, useful, useful. And what about the internet variant, the online user guide? Ah, that's just a link to the wiki page on the GitHub repository. Looks like there's about a similar amount of information there, although I haven't gone and read it word for word. Look, install Steam for gaming. 
Yes, I might like to do that. So I could just follow this guide. Yeah, there's a few extra things I've got to do, so it's uh, a bit more complicated than Ubuntu is, but if we're using Arch here, then we've got to progress towards a more advanced way of working. Now I'm going to take a look at the system settings, because there's some unique features here as well. So I can either click on the button there that says all the settings, or we could just type settings in the whisker menu. Of course, which settings is it? I think it's control panel actually, so let's try for that. Control, or control center, or control panel as it's called when you open it up. Starting with the customized look and feel. Because we don't just have to have this style here. Ah, something else I've noticed, it remembers the window position between reboots. That's something that KDE lacks. Hmm, but I don't find it too much of an issue that KDE lacks that feature. It's kind of your choice whether you like the windows to be remembered. If you've accidentally shoved it off the side of the screen, um, you can get into problems there, but that's why I like them to be reset. So the customised look and feel, that's the colour scheme. So we've got a few different themes installed by default. I quite like this dark theme. They're choosing the options on the colours, icon themes, there's quite a few icon themes installed. Mouse cursor, yep. window border, a few different options there as well. Look quite a variety we can do here. Uh, look, that's uh, a feature that can be found regularly across most desktops. Let's go to something more unique, the panel switcher. So at the moment we have the XFCE4 layout. I could use the Tint 2. Now we have a panel at the side of the screen. Now I don't think there's actually a launcher on this one, but of course being in the open box desktop we do have a launcher on the right click. So I can launch applications this way. We also have LX panel. For some reason it doesn't show the icon up there. But if you notice the menu actually changed there. Or we could have the Mate layout. So that's split between applications, places and system. Very nice, a very nice feature. So let's go back to the XFC4 layout. Would you like to add a dock? Yes, I would. And now we have a dock at the bottom of the screen. Ooh, excellent. As well as using these pre-configured layouts as well. The pre-configured layouts, they don't change too much, but uh, you can see now the panel has moved to the bottom of the screen. I tell you what, I'd like to see a Unity layout here. I really am a fan of the Unity desktop. I know that's not for everyone, and I'd be interested to see how it could work in OpenBox. So looking a bit further at this control panel, so this is going to be more generic here. We've got wallpaper switcher. There's some nice wallpapers included in Obi Revenge. Let's apply that one. So that's a green and grey variant of uh, the one I had earlier. Well, that was the default, wasn't it? So that's a lighter variant. Or we got the Arch Linux wallpapers. Of course, you can put your own wallpapers on the system. The Light DM Desktop Manager settings. Well, there's a few changes that you can make to the system. There's nothing too much I want to play with right now in the review. I'm just showing you this feature exists. Into this system menu, so display settings, change the resolution of the monitor, network connections, yeah, it's fairly self explanatory, auto start. Do you want to add or remove an item from auto start? So let's go to remove. I don't think there are too many items on auto start though. Uh, no, specifically, there is one item, Conkey. That's just a shortcut into the file manager, but hey, it's still a convenient shortcut to have. The key bindings of open box. Nice, a good feature to add. The so visual effects. Effects on the panels. Okay. Oh, very nice, very nice. Let's turn that back off. So fading, opacity, advanced. Which renderer you want to use. Cool. Nice feature. Power Manager, this was what we had earlier, so I'll turn that off. Preferred Applications, so that's the default web browser, mail reader, as well as a couple of utilities. I have File Manager and Terminal. Software, add or remove software. 
For installing applications, we have PAMAC, a graphical installer which is very similar in features to the Synaptic Package Manager. Looking across at the repositories, yeah, this is the Arch AUR community repositories, as well as an extra repository added for the OBR Revenge desktop. Firewall configuration, that's the GUFW firewall. The option to change mirrors on the download servers. Uh, the software installation tool. Uh, this is what we looked at through the welcome screen. A custom built application, very nice, useful feature. And finally, the software updater. Now, despite updating this about an hour ago, we've got more updates. Yeah, it's something I find with Arch. That's a lot of updates constantly needed. <laughs> not much of a download size, though. Not even one megabyte. And there's also a couple of other links at the bottom. System information. Yeah, you can see I'm running it in VirtualBox. And the memory usage has crept up now to about 700 meg. Uptime of 22 minutes. That means this video is dragging on quite a bit. System monitor. That's a link to HTOP. You can see we're using Compton for rendering the desktop. OBR tools. Wow, there's even more with this distro. Look, it really is packed full. And I like how they've separated Flash from the codec installer. Top marks there. Why can't Ubuntu do that? Let's take a look at the kernel manager. Please select the kernel you would like to install. Now that is a nice simplified view compared to Manjaro, which lists out the individual kernel numbers. Perhaps not everyone would appreciate the simplicity there, but uh, you know what? Someone progressing towards Arch probably could appreciate that simplicity. Would you like the current kernel or long-term support or any of these other options that are listed here? Excellent. I like that. Oh, this final one we'll look at is the Grub configuration. So I can reinstall Grub, generate a new Grub config file, or repair a dual boot. Brilliant. So basic conky view seems nice enough, but if you don't like it, you can switch to an alternate layout. Let's take a look at that. So looking in the whisker menu, I'm just going to type in conky, so C-O-N, and then get, bring up the conky manager. So you can see there are quite a few alternative views listed here. What do we have instead? Let's try that. Although it changes immediately. Nice. So you do get a little preview of it, so, but otherwise you can switch immediately. So, oh look, it brings up the CPU monitor straight away. Excellent. Uh, what's the default? Uh, it's the OB Revenge one. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that view. In terms of pre-installed applications, it is very minimal. I have installed quite a few applications as part of my testing. I'm glad I did because I spotted a problem with the KDN Live installer. I notified the developer via the Google Plus community and he responded within one hour, thanking me for the report and promised to look into the issue. Wow, quality customer service right there. Under accessories, we have the PC Man FM file manager. And you can see under the user folders, we have the pre set up documents, downloads, pictures, and videos folders. Nice simple icon theme there. Under development, we have the Qt 4 setting adjuster. We also have a Qt 5 setting adjuster later on. Under graphics, those are all applications I installed, so nothing much there. Internet, it had eLinks as the web browser. Multimedia, I don't think it actually had anything much pre installed on here. I think I installed all these through the software installer. Office, no, there wasn't anything there. Settings, we have a good range of configuration tools. Now, that's a good way to balance the system with more configuration tools than applications because leaving the applications open, you allow the user to choose what they want, really. And finally, under system, yeah, there's quite a few things there, but nothing too relevant, or most of these we've already seen. And that concludes a look at OB Revenge. I'm really impressed with it, and I think we easily have a top three Linux distro of the year right now, here in January. I definitely recommend you consider looking at this distro. I would like to thank everyone who has provided a donation through PayPal or Patreon. Your ongoing support really means a lot to me and helps keep my channel focused entirely on Linux. And thanks for watching. I will see you all later.